Dear students, in this module, we are going to look at various sample surveys that have been conducted in India on elderly issues. One of the major sample survey includes longitudinal aging study in India. Apart from this, another sample survey that we are going to cover is study on global aging and adult health. So, in these two surveys, we are going to cover the backgrounds of these surveys various objectives that are there behind conducting these surveys and also various sampling frameworks and methodologies adopted for conducting these surveys. Let us look at the first survey which is longitudinal aging study in India. It is also called as LASI study. Although adult health and aging is a subject that is increasingly being, an in, being investigated there are currently no comp comprehensive and intentionally comparable survey data in India that cover and connect the full range of topics necessary to understand the economic, social, psychological and health aspects of adults and the aging process. Longitudinal aging study in India, LASI, is designed to fill this gap. LASI majorly focuses on health, economic and social well-being of India's elderly population. LASI is conceptually comparable to the health and retirement study which is called as HRS in the United States and is appropriately harmonized with the other health and retirement studies including its sister survey in Asia such as Chinese health and retirement longitudinal study Charles and the Korean longitudinal study of aging CLOSA thereby allowing for cross country comparison LASI also takes account of features unique to India including its institutional and cultural characteristics. LASI will be a national landmark in scientific research that will allow a better understanding of India's adult health problems and population aging processes and will inform the design of appropriate evidence based policies for adults and older people. We will build on the success of the LASI pilot survey and implement the first two waves of a large scale national and state representative panel survey on the health, economic status and social behaviors of older people in India with sufficient statistical power to test hypothesis in subpopulations of interest. LASI data will advance scientific knowledge and inform policy makers in India and elsewhere. Our public internationally harmonized data will allow for cross-national comparative research studies on aging issues. The full-scale national LASI survey, which is main wave part 1, is launched in 2016. The survey instrument is carefully designed to collect information compatible with other worldwide longitudinal aging surveys as well as incorporating to culture and societies of India. The LASI team in International Institute for Population Sciences in collaboration with Harvard School of Public Health and University of Southern California successfully conducted the 2010 LASI pilot survey in the four states of Karnataka, Kerala, Punjab and Rajasthan to test survey tools, protocols and to learn lessons for the main wave. The analysis of LASI pilot data revealed insightful evidence on reported and measured health status, social network characteristics, income and consumption, retirement and pensions of aging population. Scientific goals of LASI. So students, let us look at the various goals of conducting this LASI survey. The main goal of LASI is to collect credible scientific data on burden of disease, mental health and functional health, healthcare, social and economic well-being of elderly population. LASI data is being collected based on internationally comparable research designs, tools and adopts state-of-the-art scientific methods to provide the foundation for credible and acceptable data for national and state level policy making and long-term scientific research. So what are the various objectives of this LASI study? The main objective of LASI 
is to provide comprehensive longitudinal evidence based on health, social and economic well-being of elderly population in India. LASI will provide data on demographics, household economic status, health and biomarkers, health insurance and healthcare utilization, family and social network, family welfare scheme, work and employment, retirement and pension, life satisfaction and expectations. LASI is designed to cover scientific data on five major subject and policy domains of adults and older population in India, namely health, which majorly includes disease burden and risk factors that are reported and measured, health care and health care financing, social, which includes family and social network, economic aspects like income, wealth, expenditure, employment, retirement and pension, and lastly, welfare programs for elderly. So, what are the geographic coverage and sampling design of this study? LASI main wave covers 30 states and 6 union territories of India, covering a panel sample size of 60,000 to 50 elderly persons aged 45 years and above. The long-term goal of LASI is to continue this survey for the next 25 years with the first wave planned in the year 2016-17 and second wave in 2018-19. LASI aims to obtain all the indicators for each of these 30 states and 6 union territories. In addition, LASI aims at obtaining indicators for each of the 4 metropolitan cities of Delhi, Kolkata, Mumbai and Chennai. Let us have a look at the sample design. This, the target sample for LASI is non-institutionalized Indian residents aged 45 and older and their spouses irrespective of their age. LASI adopts a multi-stage clustering sampling design, three-stage sample design in rural areas and a four-stage sample design in urban areas. In each state, at first stage, involved selection of primary sampling units, which is called as PSUs, that is sub-districts, which is tehsils or taluka. The second stage involved the selection of secondary sampling units, that is villages from rural areas and ward from urban areas of the selected PSUs. The rural areas at the third stage, households are selected from selected villages. However, sampling in urban areas involved one of one more stage. From each selected urban ward, one census enumeration block, which is called as CEB, was randomly selected in the third stage. At the fourth stage, households from this CEB will be selected. The main reason for adopting a four-stage sample design in urban areas is that urban wards are quite large, making it difficult to list all the households in a ward and select households directly from the resulting list. So what instruments have been used for LASI survey? The LASI instrument has three schedules. The first schedule includes household schedule, which is administered one per LASI selected eligible household. The household schedules start with the cover screen or roster containing questions about the demographic composition of the household and identifying key informants for the following household modules. Housing and environment section consists of questions about the household's physical dwelling, residential history and physical and social char characteristics of neighborhood. Consumption section is designed to collect data on both market purchased and home purchased consumption at the household level. Assets and debts section includes detailed questions about financial and non-financial assets and debts. Income section which attempts to capture the complete profile of income of all household members from all sources as well as remittances from non-household members. Health insurance section attempts to gather information on all the government and private health insurance schemes which provide healthcare facilities at national and state level, policy coverage and benefits offered by the policy. 
The second schedule is individual schedule which is administered to each respondent of age 45 plus and his or her spouses. The individual schedule covers the following modules. First, demographic section which includes birth date, sex, religion, caste, language, marital status, literacy, education and questions designed to approximate age for illiterate respondents. The second section involves family and social network sections that covers detailed questions about all immediate family members including parents, children and siblings both alive and deceased, social activities and psychological measures of life satisfaction, emotional, proximity, social status and others. So, social welfare scheme section includes Information on the awareness and utilization of various social security programs in India. The health section consists of questions about overall health and specific diseases, functional health, family medical history, mental health, including cognition and depression and health behavior and food security. Healthcare access and utilization is also one of the important sections in this survey which is designed to capture access and use of different types of healthcare providers. Work, retirement and pension section also is included in this survey, which includes questions about current job, including self-employment and subsistence, agriculture and employment history. The experimental module section includes and addresses topics beyond the scope of the main survey to test new concepts questions and surveying techniques. Each individual respondent will be randomly as assigned to one of the four modules described below so that each module is administered to roughly 25% of the total survey sample. It, in it includes the following modules. First, time utilization by older population, by type of activities. Second, expectations of work, survival, work limiting health problems and inflation. Third, extent of social connectedness of elderly population with family and friends. And fourth, determining health status of elderly through the use of vignettes. Biomarkers is also included in the survey, which talks and administers range of physical and functional measures of health and collects dried blood spots. Lassi covers wide range of direct physical examinations, physical tests and markers. The biomarkers collection will be done in the field by following the developed standardized protocols and procedures. In LASI, comprehensive biomarkers for measured health risk and morbidity comprises of an anthropometric measurements which includes height, weight, waist circumstances and hip circumstances. Functional health markers which are blood pressure, pulse rate, lung function test which is obstructive airway diseases or respiratory diseases, vision test, near and distance visual acuity, near and distance visual acuity. Performance based markers, grip, strength, timed walk, balance test, dried blood spot which is also called as DBS based markers. C-reactive protein, Epstein-Barr virus, glyphosylated hemoglobin and hemoglobin to collect and to examine anemia. The community schedules is also administered at community level or village or rural or urban ward. The key informants for this schedule in rural areas are village community head which are Sarpans or Pradhan or Upapradhan panchayat chairperson and village officer, secretary, any administrative person in charge of the village. The key informants for this schedule in urban areas are ward, any member of the ward that is elected member or officers or engineers or secretary who knows about the ward area for the la last two years. Moreover, the health section answered by chief medical officer in the ward office. Students, let us look at the objectives of conducting this survey in community. 
be it rural or urban areas. The main objective is to study the community characteristics. This includes demographic, social, economic and infrastructural features, access to educational institutions, health facilities, transport facilities and other public services for the community and elderly adults. Examine the awareness and coverage of government programs related to elderly health, social security and welfare. And the last objective is to identify the problems faced by the elderly in rural and urban areas. So far we looked at the LASI survey. Now students, let us have a look at study on global aging and adult health, which is also called as SAGE survey. The shifting demographic of all nations has led to a marked increase in the older population globally both in the relative and absolute terms. The World Health Organization's Multi-Country Studies Unit is working with the US National Institute on Aging Behavioral and Social Research Program to address aging and well-being through implementing multi-country aging and adult health studies to fill data gaps and pursuing cross-national comparisons with available data. The US Health and Retirement Study, which is called as HRS, is a prominent study on aging and well-being that has spurred several comparable international studies of aging to provide the necessary evidence based to address the needs and contributions of older persons in higher income countries. Yet, the majority of the older persons now and into the future will reside in lower income countries where the evidence base is very limited. Therefore, such kind of surveys are very important to understand various aspects related to elderly issues. The extent to which lower income countries have begun to generate and use critical evidence for an effective health response has been slow and suboptimal in many countries. This lack of evidence is particularly prominent in low and middle income countries, partly because the demographic transition have been relatively recent. Multi-country longitudinal studies are a powerful way to generate data raise global and country awareness of the health issues and older people and inform policy. Let us have a look at the WHO approach. World Health Organization's study on global aging and adult health, which we learned that is called as SAGE, is a study that has generated cohorts in six performance sites of about 5,000 respondents aged 50 years and above at each site that are nationally representative and can then be followed up for a period of 5 to 10 years. In addition, the study addresses issues of well-being, collects data on biomarkers in order to improve the precision of self-reported morbidity, identities, identifies risks to health and monitors interventions, collects data on health examinations and perform performance test such as anthropometry. Grip strength, blood pressure and test of cognition, vision, vision and morbidity in order to allow adjusting for biases in self-reported health domains and activities of daily living, instrumental activities of daily living. In addition, separate validation exercises are being carried out that will provide data on characteristics of self-reported morbidity, question, addressed for biases in self-reported physical activity, and compare assays from dried blood spots, DBS, to venous samples. Look, like, let us look at the methodologies used by SAGE. SAGE uses the methodologies created and data collected by WHO in the World Health Survey to build a longitudinal study on aging and adult health in low and middle income countries. The study tool builds on the WHS, refocusing on the health situation of older adults while adding new modules and sections which will assist with improving our empirical understanding of health status in older age and the contributions of health to the process of aging. 
cross-sectional aging and health data for 70 countries is available from WHO from the WHS. Students, now we will look at the sampling procedures that are followed by SAGE. The SAGE sample was predetermined as all PSUs and households selected for the WHS or SAGE wave survey were included. Exceptions are three PSUs in Assam which were replaced as they were inaccessible due to flooding and a further six PSUs were omitted for which the household roster information was not available. In each selected area, a listing of the households was conducted to classify each household into the following mutually exclusive categories. First category includes households with a WHS or SAGE wave respondent aged 50 plus, all members aged 50 plus including the WHS and SAGE wave respondent were eligible for the individual interview. Households with a WHS and SAGE wave respondent aged 47 to 49, all members aged 50 plus including the WHS or SAGE wave respondent aged 47 to 49 was eligible for the individual interview. Households with the WHS or SAGE wave female respondent aged 18 to 46 years, also all female members aged 18 to 49 including the WHS SAGE wave female respondent aged 18 to 46 were eligible for the individual interview. Households with the SAGE or WHS wave male respondent aged 18 to 46 years Three households were selected using systematic, ramp, systematic sampling and one male aged 18 to 49 was eligible for the individual interview. In the households not selected, all members aged 50 plus were eligible for the individual interview. Let us have a look at stages of selection. There are several stages. The first one is strata which includes state, then locality. Several codes have been assigned to the stages of selection. Then PSUs and EAs 375 surveyed, SSUs, households, 10,424 surveyed and TSUs which are individual, 12,198 individuals were surveyed. What was the response rate? The household response rate was 88% for this survey. Cooperation rate was 92%. Individual rate for response was 68% while the cooperation rate for individual was as high as 92%. Let us look at the weighing. Household weights for analysis at household level and individual weights for analysis at a person level were calculated. These were based on the selection probability at each stage of selection. Household weights were post stratified by the six states and locally according to the 2006 household projections obtained from population projections for India and states from 2001 to 2026. Report of the Technical Group on Population Projections constituted by the National Commission on Population by May 2006, Office of the Register General and Census Commissioner, 3, India. The information is collected by Study on Global Aging and Adult Health 2007 wave, first in India. The individual weights were post stratified by the six states, loc locality, sex and age groups, which is 18 to 49 years, 50 to 59 years, 60 to 69 years and 70 plus years according to the 2006 projected population estimates. A second set of household and individual weights are available which are post stratified to weights up to the number of households and 18 plus populations respectively in the entire country. Weights are not normalized. The primary objective of SAGE is to obtain reliable, valid and comparable data on levels of health for older, 
which is 50 plus years adults population. The second important objective of SAGE is to examine patterns and dynamics of age related changes in health using longitudinal follow up of survey respondents. Third objective of SAGE is to improve com comparability of self reported measures through measured performance tests and vignettes and conduct biomarkers tests for selected health domains in subgroups. SAGE has released preliminary data sets for six countries which are China, Ghana, India, Mexico, Russian Federation and South Africa consisting of over 55,000 respondents. The data are presently being cleaned and weighed and will be archived with full documentation of metadata using international standards of the data documentation initiative and those for data and metadata exchange. Anonymized microdata will also be publicly released. Sage is also working with other data collection efforts such as the New China New China Health and Retirement Longevity Study which is called as CHALS and Longitudinal Aging Study in India which we just learned LASI as well as harmonizing measurement strategies with studies in high income countries that reflect the SAGE of the art and other similar studies cross national comparisons. SAGE is also working closely with the international network of field sites with continuous demographic evaluation of populations and their health which is also called as in-depth in developing countries to ensure that detailed methodological exercises can be undertaken to validate self-reported morbidity and survey mortality data. In-depth offers a unique opportunity to inform developments in SAGE. Two specific strengths of this collaboration are First, given that in-depth sites have relatively large populations under surveillance with regular monitoring of vital events, the inclusion of a standard effort module to examine health and health related outcomes in regular surveillance rounds will provide rich data on sensitivity to change of the instrument and allow monitoring on time trends. Further, given that regular surveillance data is being collected in these populations, innovative strategies can be developed to link survey and surveillance data to inform larger estimates if some national surveys in SAGE also overlap with in-depth countries. Second, we need to understand that given the expertise within in-depth sites and their location, additional methodological exercises that will refine SAGE can be more readily undertaken. This can include improved record, recording of age, development of verbal autopsy, tools to measure deaths in the aging population, measurement of health and health related outcomes of aging care providers, caring for HIV or AIDS orphans and the nature of carer burden and other important issues. Data are currently available from the first round of SAGE in-depth surveys including a short version in a larger sample and the full version in a smaller subset from over 46,000 respondents. In Ghana, India and South Africa, this will provide an opportunity for comparisons with national samples. So students, in this module we learned two important sample surveys. LASI and SAGE. We learned about its background, its methodological framework, its objective and why such kind of surveys are important to study the needs and various issues of elderly. Thank you.